I'm Peter Arvai. I'm the CEO for Prezi, and this is What to Speak podcast. Do you kick ass when you speak, present, or pitch? If not, these expert discussions and insider tips can help you right now, today. Welcome to the What to Speak podcast. I'm your host, Brian Kelly. Um. What? 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 I want to thank you so much for either listening to or watching today's episode. If you love What to Speak, please do me a big favor and help spread the word. Go to whattospeak.com slash love. Again, it means the world to have your support and your enthusiasm, so thank you. Peter Arvai, are you ready to answer the question, What to Speak? Perfect. All right. I love it. We're bringing an international style here. Yeah, that was Hungarian, if you're wondering. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you, Peter, so much for coming on the show. You are the CEO and co-founder of Prezi, the cloud-based presentation software company that so many people have adopted over the last couple of years, last few years. And you're also a man of many talents. So I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Now, Peter, I would love to dive into a little bit of your history, your story. You know, how did this come to be where you started this company that's all about helping people communicate better to share their ideas, their messages, their products, their services? You know, for you personally and kind of at the intersection of what Prezi is all about, uh, can you give us a little background? Yeah, sure. I mean, since the very beginning uh, of of I guess my career, but even as a child, I was always interested in the intersection of arts and technology, and and you know how these things shape our world. And um, I remember actually the first ever uh, first ever uh, successful business I did was actually a dance performance that I produced. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted to change the way we we told stories in the form of, of dance and theater. And so that's kind of uh, where I got started. But ever since college, uh, I've been with startups. And, and uh, the first job I ever had, I was a fifth employee in, in a mobile internet startup. And we actually made TED Talks available on mobile phones. So that, you know, that may seem like a fairly simple thing today with iPhones and whatnot. But this will, I guess, date me when I say that actually back then it was a challenge. Uh, In fact, it was in the times when, you know, WAP and J2ME was essentially the way you got Internet out to mobile phones. And, And we had to figure out how to make that happen. Yeah, well before well before the iPhone. And so so that was uh, a fun challenge that absolutely got me hooked on the idea of, of you know, how to help people to share ideas in, in more effective ways. And, and then later I started um, uh, another company that was uh, primarily focusing on healthcare. And uh, it wasn't so much to do with live presentations, but it had everything to do with uh, presentation of data because my, well, first my dad passed away and then my mom got ill in addition. And I realized that while uh, I could easily get good information about, for example, toothpaste, right? I could go to my local grocery store and compare prices, ingredients, where the toothpaste was manufactured, etc. I couldn't really find good information about healthcare, actually. So I would take my mom to the hospital, but I, I wouldn't know um, what are the mortality rates, what are the infection rates given that certain hospital and given that uh, specific procedure that she had to go through. Right. And I thought it was so weird that I had pretty good information about toothpaste and almost no information about a surgery that could be life and death. So I wanted to really be a part of changing that. And, and so in the country where I was born and raised, uh, Sweden, we, we built this website where we gathered all this information and, and made it understandable for people like my mom to, to be able to 
compare and contrast hospital A with hospital B and the actual treatment outcomes that they were producing. And and it was after that that I met my co-founders at Prezi. That's fantastic. I mean, it's it's funny because I have a number of friends and colleagues who are overseas and they've all talked about how they've been exposed to so many great ideas and thought leaders through watching TED Talks on their mobile phones. And to hear the, your story about how you kind of started there and then wrapping that into the experience that you had um, you know, with the company after that and then how that was a stepping stone to Prezi. That, that's fascinating. So thanks so much for sharing. So, Peter, I, I would really love to understand when you set out to create, um, you know, what Prezi is today and, you know, meeting up with your co-founders, how did you guys come to this whole thing? And it sounds, I've heard some of the stories about how and why Prezi's are so effective and there's, you know, it ties into cognitive science, but you didn't really have all that from what I understand. Is that correct? No, I, I mean, in, in the beginning, uh, we had extremely little information about where we could take this. And I mean, you can imagine three guys getting together, sitting down in a cafe in Budapest in Hungary and saying that, oh, we want to take on Microsoft, Apple and Google and how our environment reacted. It, it, you know, it, it probably seemed ridiculous <laughs> to people um, back then. Um, but um well, the, where where it all started was actually with Adam, my co-founder, who is by now a world-renowned artist. So his background is in architecture, and and he's also very famous in in the exhibit circles. Um, and he would do these beautiful visualizations that would really captivate people. Um, and a lot of people would uh, go go up to Adam and and ask, "Is there any way I can do?" my own presentation using the software and, and and where do you get this software? And and one of those people who went up to Adam was the second co-founder in the company who's who's confusingly enough also called Peter. <laughs> so um and and he was uh, a professor at Budapest Technical University at the time. So when Adam uh, said, well, all you have to do is to calculate these transitions and then, you know, um, build a software that does that automatically. Uh, then uh, Peter actually understood what the heck Adam was saying, because you can imagine that most people just gave up there. Right. Um, so, so... Uh, Peter took, you know, the the early versions of of what Adam uh, had done, and he actually managed to squeeze in a talk of his own into that very rough uh, early ideas of Adam, and and it turned out really great. And uh, he 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 was very happy with the results, and then the two of them started wondering, well. Would there be a way of actually making this available to more people than just the two of us? Right. And that's when Peter got in touch with me because actually Peter had worked with me in that mobile internet um, uh, startup. And, um, you know, I, I, I guess because they, they realized that they, well, they wanted to work with a guy who had experience of building startups, but, but also who could approach. Uh, the challenge more from a user perspective and a product perspective. Mm -hmm. And and when we got together, in and this was in 2008, that was really kind of the challenge ahead of us. How do we take these beautiful visualizations that Adam has done, but translate it into something that anyone, irrespective of if they had a, a, an engineering or, or an architecture background, could take and, and build their own stories with? So, so that was the background, and and we worked almost a year on Prezi until we we launched the first version in two thousand nine. Well, Peter, let's take a step back because I'm making an assumption that a number of people in the audience know what Prezi is, and I'm sure most of them do. But for those in the audience that have never heard of the software that you guys produce and so many people have adopted, could you just give us a quick rundown of 
what Prezi is all about and the differences between some of the other software that's out there for presentations. Sure. Um, essentially, Prezi is a presentation tool that instead of doing slides, you arrange all your ideas on this large canvas that zooms. So it allows you to show the relationship between your ideas in a very simple fashion. And to explain why that's so important, uh, I, I think the best way to illustrate that is actually through a question. Mm. And so, Brian, if I were to ask you, what kitchen appliances do you have at home? I would say the number one is the KitchenAid mixer that my wife loves to use. Okay. What else? Um, we've got the microwave, which is okay. very essential. Yeah. Um, we've got a blender. Uh-huh. And then we also have uh, the coffee maker. Great. Great. Now, the reason why I asked you that question is actually once we start reflecting about what you just did, it'll tell us a lot about human communication because I guess what you just did right now is you imagined your kitchen mm -hmm. and then you zoomed on to your counter and then you saw a blender, right? Yep. And then you zoomed back out, saw the counter and next to it was, uh, I don't know, microwave. Yep. And perhaps then you zoomed out further and you turned around and you said, uh, you know, we also have a coffee maker or whatnot, right? Totally. That's exactly what happened. Now, equally important is what you didn't do. What didn't you do? I don't know. What didn't I do? That was probably a lot of things you didn't do. But in particular, for this conversation, it's worth noting that you didn't build a list of words, mm. neither bullet pointed or alphabetized. Yep. And the reason why you didn't do that is because it turns out that your brain is actually quite bad at processing text. And it's bad at both producing it and understanding it. So, so what we're learning, and th we didn't know this at all when we started Prezi, but what we're learning is that actually the way Prezi behaves is kind of similar to how the human cognition has evolved in the last few million years. And, and, and cognitive scientists talk about landmarks. Yep. And, and the, you know, the, the benefit of landmarks and your ability to storing them is that you could get out of the cave turn left by the stone, turn right by the tree, find some berries, and then be able to find your way back to the cave, right? Mm -hmm. And if you wouldn't be able to do that, you wouldn't have survived. So it's, it's a, it's a you know, very fundamental evolutionary uh, uh, principle. And what's unique about these landmarks is that you know, it, it's the combination of two types of information. One is a visual recognition, like, say, this is a blender. Yep. But the other is where the blender is. So spatial position. So it's on the counter next to the microwave. It turns out that for you to be able to understand and retain information, to a large extent, it is the combination of these two things that's enabling you to understand and comprehend information. Yep. Okay? And... <clears throat> It's, it's kind of interesting uh, that, you know, Prezi, essentially what it does, and, and we had no clue mm -hmm. when we started, but what it does is creates the space, right, where you can arrange the pictures. So you can add the spatial element, uh, which is very hard to do with slides. You know, a lot of people get the advice that if they do slides, they should do as many pictures as possible and as little text as possible, and now you understand why. Mm -hmm. We can actually understand it from the way our brains work. It turns out that you, if you can actually position the pictures in a kitchen or on a mountain or what not the metaphor is, people will actually understand and remember things better. Yeah. So when you build a Prezi where you actually take audiences through a visual journey of where you see how things relate to each other, they're much more likely to both understand and and remember information. And what are what are, what are the results of this? Well, there are companies like Crunch Franchise. You may have seen Crunch Fitness. You yeah. know, uh, it's 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 a franchise where 
the guys, you know, pitched the the idea of this gym, and what and they saw that when they moved over from slides to Prezi, they they got a thirty uh, percent improved, you know, close rate. Yeah. So so it actually does, you know, matter, of course, how effectively you can uh, visualize your story and help people to understand it. But I guess I don't need to explain that to you. <laughs> Well, it's it's interesting because a lot of the principles that you've kind of walked us through are rooted in the same things that I share with folks when I, I teach them and work with them on how to create their presentations visually to where exactly rooted in what you're saying and how the brain processes visual information and when it can kind of hook into that that visual and that's related to the message that you're trying to convey you know, the power that that has and the, the level of retention that occurs when you're able to do that. And then to see that you've got a tool that allow, it provides that framework for those of us that are trying to tell our stories to be able to help our audience that much better walk through exactly what this is and describe that and allow them to really internalize and hook into their own experiences what that message is. It's, it's incredibly powerful. It, you know, it's quite interesting, but uh, I don't know if you knew this, but people knew this importance of not just, you know, visuals, but even the spatial element of it already 2,000 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, the Greeks, when they invented democracy, they, they had this one big problem. Do you know what it was? No, what was it? They, they didn't have pen and paper. <laughs> so they had to get up a, on a podium and they had to do convincing speeches, but they had no way to take uh, memos to know what to talk about, right? Yep. So what they would do is they would actually lay out their uh, talks across their living rooms, and as they got up on the podium, they did a mental walkthrough of the room to remember what to say. And even to this day, memory champions, which I don't know if you knew that there are people competing in 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 ability to recall things, they use exactly this combination of, you know, visuals placed into room to be able to understand and retain information. It's the memory Olympics. Yeah. I know all about these guys. These guys are amazing. And the fact, like what you've described is the memory palace. Yes. Um, so like Cicero, I know, would, would be one of those folks that really was able to leverage this idea of what you're saying, using spatial aspects to say, here's what I need to talk about. And they visualize it within that, that physical space. And it's so much easier to remember and recall that information than it is to memorize a list of bullet points or facts and figures that you want to share with your audience. In fact, there's even research uh, now that shows pretty clearly that if you do a presentation with, say, just a ton of bullet points on a slide people will actually understand and retain information worse yep. than had you not shown any visual at all. Yep. So yep. then it's better. It's actually better if you're just going to do a list of bullet points. It's much better to just uh, stand and talk in front of people because then you you know, essentially don't overload the brain, which doesn't know what to choose. Should I try to process this really difficult to understand text or listen to the person talking to me, or you know, um, you know, the in the be- the better choice in that situation is simply not showing anything. Exactly. But there, but but it's clearly so that if you show pictures and you put the pictures into a spatial arrangement, that it actually enhances the story and and helps people to understand and and remember things better. I love it. Well, it's, it's great stuff, and I'm really really excited and thrilled that you have this software that helps people in in a way that I mean just hearing that crunch fitness gets a 30% higher close rate because of how they're able to take advantage of this that's big for a lot of us that are really trying to inspire and motivate people that's something that that can have an impact on having our audience go and take action on that message for those of us that are selling you know, either a product or a service, 
again, you know, you want your audience to be able to fully comprehend what it is that you're communicating and then do something with it. Ultimately, hopefully purchase your product or your service. So very powerful stuff indeed. Well, Peter, I want to ask you really quick. I know, of course, you've got you've got a special relationship with um, the, the folks at TED, but I'd love to hear from you really quick in just a couple of minutes. You know, you had the opportunity to deliver a TED talk. What was what was that like for you? Um, you know, was it something that you spent a lot of time preparing for? Was it something that you were nervous about? Is there anything that you can share related to your experience giving that TED talk? Sure. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'll be the first one to say, just so you know, I've I've bombed presentations as often as I succeeded. Just because I'm the CEO of a presentation tool company doesn't mean that uh, I always succeed. So, yeah, no, I, I had to prepare well. And, in fact, talking about uh, bombing a presentation occasion, in fact, when we launched Prezi, what what I did was I... I I went to a startup, you know, conference and, you know, as always, there's 50 companies pitching their mm-hmm. products and, and, uh, and your big job is really to stand out, you know, how, how do you make yourself memorable? And, and one of the absolute worst things about actually being a CEO of a presentation uh, tool is that people set these amazing expectations. So Ahead of introducing me, they will say, so Peter is the CEO of a presentation to a company. I'm really looking forward to this because this has got to be great. <laughs> and, uh. and and as you can imagine, it's, it's always uh, nerve-wracking. On, on that occasion, I completely bombed because well, I decided to put on a suit and a tie to stand out. <laughs> At the startup conferences, there's never any suits, never any ties. And I got up on stage and and uh, I I uh, wanted to tell people that bad presentations can be confining and boring, just like ties. And I lifted my tie, and at this point, I was winking to the moderator. Um, to bring the scissors that I had prepared him with. Yeah. Only he wasn't paying attention to me at all because he was sitting and flirting with a girl in the audience. And so there I am with my tie, and I have five minutes to establish that Prezi is the most awesome presentation <laughs> tool in the world, and I don't know what to do. I'm just sweating. So you can imagine five minutes later, I get off on this, off the stage. Everyone, you know, must be think that, thinking that this was, you know, the worst thing ever. Until the guy actually, uh, the moderator gets onto the stage and asks the audience, um, you know, so would you guys be willing to pay for this product? And of the 2,000 people in the audience, half of them uh, li- raised their hands. So that was that's good. That was more a testimony probably to Prezi than to my <laughs> presentation skills. Um, but um, you know, I think that any presentation situation can can only be made really great with with preparation. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and and oh, go ahead. Yeah, and 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 if it's for a TED talk, and in my case, it was a TEDx talk, but right. but but um, for 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 a TED talk, particularly so, you know, you have the exact minutes. Uh, counting in front of you, you need to be hitting all your points at at the right moment, and and it's all about preparation. I would say. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that so many people think. Oh well, you know, I, I know what I'm going to talk about. We'll just go out there and we'll do it, and that's really dangerous. That's when when things can go wrong, and you're not really fully prepared. You might forget what you want to say. You know, there's all sorts of things that can be introduced uh, in a negative way. So preparation is key. And preparation also does help us feel a little bit less nervous. I mean, we're always going to feel nervous to some degree, but having that preparation uh, makes it so much, so much less of a stressful situation. Yeah. So great. Well, thank you for sharing that. Peter, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll be right back to wrap up our discussion with the rapid fire Q&A. Struggling with feeling comfortable in front of an audience when you present? Or maybe you're confident, 
but you have difficulty stumbling over filler words like um, ah, and ah. Well, you can start kicking ass today by signing up for our weekly VIP updates. As a bonus, you'll also receive 11 free tips that will uncover six psychological secrets to public speaking, plus five tips on how to stop using filler words. Go to whatthespeak.com slash VIP. All right, Peter. So let's just jump right into the first quick question. And this one's a good one, especially for you. Are you a slide or no slide kind of a guy? <laughs> I'm a Prezi kind of guy. There you go. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, Peter, out of all of the different speakers that are out there, and I'm sure you, you've had a, a great deal of exposure to different speakers, who's one person? And I know this is probably going to be hard, but if there was one person out there that inspires you the most, who are they and why do they inspire you? One recent uh, speaker who who really touched me very deeply is Lawrence Lessig. And he talks about, you know, the... Um, challenges that faces Amer American democracy as, as money is influencing politics a lot. And yeah. he just does a very passionate uh, talk that uh, is, is very touching. Yeah, he's good. I've seen him talk a couple different times and he's got a powerful message. That is for sure. All right. Now you shared a little bit um, of a story like this, but I'm curious, aside from the situation with the tie and the, sc the scissors not appearing at the right time. Is there anything else like crazy, bizarre, funny that's happened to you in front of an audience when you've had to give a presentation? Um, well, you know, uh, probably my most successful presentation uh, in my life was when I pitched Prezi to Chris Anderson at TED and to, for him to make an investment, despite Ted not having uh, done an investment in a company ever before. Yep. And, you know, to, to my great fortune, I had this great tool called Prezi. So in 18 minutes, I, I managed to convince him to in, in, invest in Prezi. And I think that is probably the most memorable presentation that I've, I've ever done that before my, my time was up, we were shaking hands and, and I literally had the ironic thing, the 20 minutes to present to him. So that's great. Uh, so, so yeah, I love it. All right. How big have, of an impact has your ability to speak in front of an audience, to share your idea, your passion, your message had on your career? Seems like kind of an obvious question, but I'd love to hear, you know, your unique perspective on this. I, I think uh, it's been crucial. So in, uh, yeah, how big of an impact? Wow. How, I mean, I think <laughs> it, it's defining for, for any entrepreneur to be able to do that. You know, yeah. entrepreneurship in many ways is the fine balance between being crazy and a genius. And, you know, depending on the day, you're, you're either on the right or the wrong side. Yeah. Uh, of the line and to some extent the whether you end up on the right or the wrong side of the line depends on your ability to express whatever your idea is so so i i think it's it's crucial yeah absolutely well peter is there a, a book or a resource that you might recommend to somebody who's just getting started something that's inspired you and, and kind of helped you on your path to really mastering communication skills. Yeah, I, I really love um, a book by Andrew Abela, um, and it's called, uh, let's see, shoot. I just, uh, Extreme Presentation by Design, I think right. is the title. Yeah. One of my absolute favorite books. That is a great, I mean, there, there are a ton of fantastic resources, but that is one that's at the top of the list, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Well, Peter, I want to thank you so much uh, for your time. It's been fantastic having you here. We're going to have links to, of course, Prezi, as well as any other resources, including the book that you just mentioned over in the show notes at whatthespeak.com. You, uh, you are an inspiration, and so many people have been gravitating towards your, your software platform for presentation skills. So thank you. You are absolutely somebody who kicks ass when they speak, present, or pitch. Thanks so much. You bet. 
Bye. Research in 2009 by Pablo Bernal revealed that by simply taking a posture of confidence, people feel more confident. Now there's a device that can help you with this. It's called LumoLift, and I've already pre-ordered mine. If you'd like to boost your confidence when speaking in public through better posture, check out whatthespeak.com slash lift to watch the video and grab one for yourself. All right, here we go with the outro. Thanks so much for joining us today on What to Speak. Be sure to visit whatthespeak.com for show notes on every episode and to sign up for our email list to stay updated on resources that'll help you kick ass when you speak, present, or pitch.